while we're in this place where we know the truth of us is not our performances, is not our personality, is not what we do or achieve or get or attain. We don't bring any of that with us. What we do come into this world with and we leave the world with is a state of perfection. And some people call that truth. The truth of us is untainted and pristine. Is it possible to live a normal life and not ever tell a lie? There are places in A Course in Miracles where it talks about the truth of us, the truth with a capital T. It's not relative truth, the this and that, that changes from day to day with life. It's the truth of who we are. And I remember uh, shortly after I woke up to the truth of who we are, that we're all perfect and we all came in with this connection to the divine that's pristine and untouchable and unquantifiable and unlimited and infinite. And each and every one of us is that. We just kind of slap these bodies on over it. And then we imagine that we're the limitations that all these bodies uh, speak to us of every day, all day. And, and we're not safe and we're not secure as long as we are looking at ourselves as being just this body. But look what this body is. It's animated by this invisible energy that breathes us every day, all day, came in with our first breath, we'll leave with our last. And while this energy of, of this perfection within us animates us, it brings us from place to place in life. And so while we're in this place where we know the truth of us is not our performances, is not our personality, is not what we do or achieve or get or attain, we don't bring any of that with us, what we do come into this world with and we leave the world with is a state of perfection. And some people call that truth. The truth of us is untainted and pristine. So yes, there have been people. And, and as I was saying, the story that I was going to relate is shortly after I woke up to realize that perfection is in all of us and that I could just default to letting that perfection run my life very miraculously. I wound up in India at an ashram um, of, a, of a sainted man, Sri Aurobindo started a beautiful ashram and then a whole um, collective of people that live in a place called Oroville. And it's very uh, sustainably oriented for many years now. This was the 1920s, um, 30s, 40s that he was around leading this community, a spiritual community. And to go into the room where he wrote his books, he wrote some amazing, beautiful books of, that are transcendent in nature. Um, and and to go into the room, you had to go down some stairs and there was typically a line in this um, ashram for to getting into his study where he wrote the books and had his pen and, and things on a desk. And as you went down uh, the stairs, there is a sign that said, God is truth. And I remember that I had heard that so many times in my life, and I had seen that in scriptures or things in, in, in different kind of spiritual texts, but I didn't understand truth is the perfection of who we are. And so if you wanted to name the divine in any way, if you, if you use the word God, that's sort of nebulous and people have ideas or, or thoughts about what that might mean or what that is. But if you want to know what God is, God is truth. So someone who's surrendered to truth knows that they don't have to micromanage their life anymore. What that means is it's like, relax, relax. The truth will do it for you. So notice how when people tell lies, they're typically caring a lot about the good or bad opinion of other people. We're kind of taught that we have to make other people happy in order to be happy, which is not true at all. 
And we're taught that we have to please other people in order to make them comfortable, in order to be able to, to be safe on earth. We learn how to lie in a way that it lets us navigate life in quotes more safely. But if someone is aware of their own divinity and wakes up to their own divinity to wake up to what God in quotes is, the divinity of us, there's no reason anymore to lie in any way. A Course in Miracles puts it really well. It says that when you're telling the truth, your thoughts, your actions, and your words are all the same. Feel that. That's really a high bar for truth, that your thoughts, your actions, and your words are all the same. And I would say this, is it possible to live a normal life and not ever tell a lie? That's what the question is. You'll not have a normal life. You'll have an exceptional life. And you'll have a liberated life. And you'll have a free life. And you'll have a beautiful, creative life in which you're actually evolving things because you're unapologetically being yourself. And the self of you is connected and at one with the truth of only love is real and nothing real can be threatened. And you'll embody that, and you'll let yourself freely live that. So that's not a normal life. That is an exceptional life. But I'd say it's a life that we should all um, let ourselves aspire to and see as possible for us, because all it really feels like is a surrender and a relaxing into not performing and to not put your care or concerns on, on the results or attaching to results or the good or bad opinions of other people. So important to live a liberated life. Truth is thoughts, words, and actions are all the same. And they're all surrendered to the divine and your perfection. Relax, <laughs> let the divine do it for you. And it'll all be the truth and it'll be an exceptional life.